happy Friday. It is Friday. It is Friday. TGIF. Thank God I'm forgiven. Thank God we are in the word. Thank God Helen Martinez is on. Thank the Lord on my soul. Thank the Lord. Buenos dias. Good to have you. The first one on. Is John right there? Say hi to John for me. Is Eddie right there? Say hi to Eddie for me. God bless you. Good to have you guys on. Um, it is Friday, January 14. Good morning, Danny Castro. Buenos dias. I uh, just want to... <laughs> I was having a great day yesterday. I was, you know, it was, uh, it was good. I came, to, came home from, uh, from lunch. And then uh, for some reason, I went in the back of the, the house because it, it, uh, it butts up against uh, it's a pretty good street but uh, it's pretty uh, secluded here in the uh, you know the area that I live in and it's, it's, a, it's a great neighborhood but uh, somebody came in somebody came into our neighborhood and started tagging on a bunch of a bunch of uh, places tagged in the by, by the uh, by the gas station and then that person decided to tag on my back wall. Mmm. It was like, ah, things happen. I know things happen in life. I know that things bring disappointment, discouragement. And so I understand. I'm living it. We're living it. You know, we, uh, it was crazy. It's like they tagged the big old letters and I don't know, it just <laughs> very disappointing, but just with the with the with the people that are that don't that don't care about other people's property it's just so sad you know there's just the it just to me it just reflects the kind of world that we're living in that people have no respect of uh, of people's uh people's things and people i don't know i'm just i don't want to get into a rant but praise god that um you know that the call the city see what the city can do and uh, they have a they have a graffiti removal uh, team, and so they're going to be removing the graffiti on our back wall. But I just all that I have to share this because it's like you know you're not alone in this, guys. You're not alone in 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 life. You're not alone. You're not alone in this journey. You're not alone in the trenches, guys. We are in the trenches together, and so we're gonna get through it. We're gonna paint over it. We're gonna uh, do something to remove that thing. Because that thing does not belong within our house. It does, does not belong within us. And so it's just like how the enemy works. Is like the enemy works in and he just comes in and tries to destroy things. Because that's the purpose of the enemy. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Try to destroy your things. Try to destroy what's happening in your life. Don't let him. Don't let him. Don't. And we're not going to let this off. This We're not going to let this thing that has happened to us get us down. But we're going to keep on moving forward, guys. And then, so I, that's why I tell you, if things have happened in your life, keep on moving forward. Right, Yolanda? Good morning. Buenos dias. Good to have you. Uh, today is January 14th. We're going to be reading <clears throat> Genesis chapter 30 and then uh, 31, 16. And then we're going to be reading Matthew chapter 10, 1 through 23. Good morning, Maria Lopez. Uh, Matthew chapter 10, 1 through 23. And then we're going to be reading Psalms 12, 1 through 8. Then we're going to be reading Proverbs 3, 13 through 15. So let's get into it. But before I get into it, have you had disappointments? Have you had setbacks? Have you had brokenness? Have you had arguments? Have you had arguments with your spouse, arguments with your parents, arguments with your siblings, arguments at work? Have you had those things that are trying to set you back? Have you had uh, things in your life that have been brokenness in your life, have been like broke, you feel like you're broken, you're, we are broken people? You know, you're not alone in this, guys. You're not alone in the brokenness. And a lot of times, if you want to title this little devotional, is disqualified. A lot of times we feel like we are disqualified because of even sometimes how we act, how we handle things, how if we blow it up, if we uh, have done things in the past, if we've 
if we have done things that are caused brokenness even to other people, if we ourselves caused that, or if somebody has caused that upon our lives, and a lot of times we feel like we have been disqualified from being used by God. Sometimes we feel like we have been disqualified, disqualified. And this message is not a message to give us uh, the, the license to continue to sin. It doesn't give us a license to continue to uh, be in our mess, but it just shows us, it shows us what God has done. It shows us what God can do in the midst of brokenness. Because check this out, guys. I want to read to you guys. This is powerful. Where did it go? There we go. God uses broken people like you and me. God uses broken things. It, it takes broken soil to produce a crop. It, 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 it takes a broken seed to sprout up. And it takes broken clouds to give the rain. It takes broken grain to give bread. And it's broken bread to give strength. It, it was a broken alabaster jar that gives forth perfume. And it was Peter's weeping and bitterly brokenness to return to, to Christ in great power and to receive great power than ever. Every Superman in scripture except Christ has the kryptonite. Noah became drunk. Somebody wants to say hi real quick. Somebody woke up. <laughs> Who's this? Say hi. He wants to come on the blog today. <laughs> oh, I love him. Look at him. He got a fresh haircut. Hi, Nathan. And he went back to school. And um, so check this out, guys. As we get back into this, uh, Noah became drunk. Abraham lied about his wife. Sarah laughed at God's word and, and then lied. Jacob was a deceiver. Moses was a murderer and disobeyed God. Rahab was a prostitute. Samson was lustful. David was an adulterer and murderer. Solomon married foreign wives and embraced idolatry. Elijah was afraid and struggled with depression. Jonah ran away from God. The disciples argued about who was going to be the greatest. And so we see all these things that have just, you feel like we has disqualified the people. But one thing they had in common is like they did turn it back to the Lord. Lord, we need you. We can't do this without you. So let's get into, into, into Genesis. Genesis chapter four, uh, 30. Genesis chapter four, uh, 30. So look at When Rachel saw that she wasn't having any children for for Jacob, she became jealous of her sister. She pleaded with Jacob, give me children or I'll die. And Jacob became furious with Rachel. Am I God? He asked. Is he the one, is the one who has kept you from having, <laughs> he's the one that's kept you from having children. That's what it says right there. Am I God? Basically, it's like, am I Mr. Fix-It-All? Am I, am I here to fix it? It's not me. It's God. He's like pointing the fingers. It's like, look at it. Rachel was, was, uh, was jealous of her sisters. And then all of a sudden, she was like, she's pointing to Jacob. You see, you're not giving me children. You're not doing... Uh... <laughs> and then Jacob's reply is like, what? Am I God? Am I, am I going to fix this for you? I'm not the one. It's God. It's God the one that uh, he's he's the one that's that's keeping you from having a child. And you see all the finger the finger pointing. He's like this and that. It's like what the, all the, the they're they're disqualified. They're disqualified from being used by God. And a lot of times from the outside looking in, you're like, how can these people be used by God? You see all, all this stuff. You see all the arguments. You see all the the backbiting. You see all the pointing of the fingers. You see all the the arguing and stuff. You, do you see this? I'm seeing this like I was I was reading this, I was like, they're they're pretty broken. They're pretty broken. And then I start reflecting on my life. I'm like, I'm pretty broken too. <laughs> I'm pretty broken. I'm pretty like, Lord. Then Rachel told him, take my maid, Bilha, and sleep with her. What? And she will bear children for me. 
Through her, I can have a family too. So Rachel gave her her ser uh, her servant Bilhah to Jacob as a wife, and she slept and he slept with her. Bilhah became pregnant and and presented him with a son. Rachel named him Dan, for she said, "God has vindicated me. He has heard my request and given me a son." Then Bilhah became pregnant again and gave Jacob a second son. Rachel named him Nephtali, for she said, "I'm I have struggled hard." with my sister and I am winning. You see, I'm trying to get ahead above my sister. I'm trying to get ahead above my siblings. I'm trying to get ahead at work. I'm trying to get ahead. I'm going to do whatever it takes. Meanwhile, Leah realized that she wasn't getting pregnant anymore. So she took her servant Zilpah and gave her Jacob as a wife. So Leah now is saying, okay, I'm not getting pregnant anymore. So look at this, Rachel. So Zilpah gave her, her Jacob as a son. Soon Zilpah uh, presented him with a son. Leah named him Gad. And she said, how fortunate I am. Then Zilpah gave Jacob a second son. And Leah named him Azure. For she said, what joy is mine. Now the other women will celebrate with me. One day during the harvest, Reuben found some man rakes uh, growing in the field and brought them to his mother Leah. Rachel begged Leah, please give me some of your son's mandrakes. But Leah replied, wasn't it enough that you stole my husband? Now will you steal my son's mandrakes too? And Jacob and Rachel answered, I will let Jacob sleep with you tonight if you give me some mandrakes. <laughs> this, <laughs> who needs a soap opera when you got this? It's like, your eyes just like light up like, wow. If we look back in our lives, if we look back and what we have done, if, if there was a video of all the stuff that we have done in the past, a lot, a lot of times we look at the past and say, Lord, you see, that's why I can't be used by God. And that's why so many times that's what has stopped people from being effective in the kingdom. Because we look at the past and we're like, you see, this is what disqualifies me. Of being used by God. And it keeps going. Rachel answered. I will let Jacob sleep with you. So evening as Jacob was coming home with the fields. Leah went out to meet him. You must come and sleep with me tonight. She said I have paid you for some mandrakes. And, and, and <laughs> that my son found. So that night he slept with Leah. And God answers Leah's prayers. She became pregnant again. And gave birth to, to a fifth son of Jacob. Named him Iskar. In the middle of this, God answers Leah's prayers. What? Lord, don't you know that all of this stuff has happened? Don't you know that they're fighting? Don't you know that they're arguing? Don't you know that they're even using their even using Jacob? It's like they're scheming, they're lying. And you're like, you see, Jacob deserved it. Because if you look at the name Jacob, he's a liar, deceiver, manipulator. And so you look at the name. And you look at the things that Jacob has done in the past and you're like, oh, you see, Jacob is getting a taste of his own medicine. Wait, 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 wait. wait look at this verse. God answered Leah's prayers. In the midst of what we've gone through, in the midst of what has happened in their lives, God answered their prayers. God, will you do such a thing? God, will you use a family like this? Would you use a person like this, Lord? And I just heard the voice of God say, I will use broken people to reach broken people. I do amazing things in brokenness. In the midst of your brokenness, when all the pieces are shattered into a million, million bits of pieces, he said to bring together and make it new again. He said, I am the potter. You are the clay. I am the potter. You are the clay. Even in the broken clay, you can bring it back together. And the Lord's working and the Lord's doing. And you see that it's not about you, but it's about the Lord. It's about 
in our weakness, that he is our strength. It's about when what he has done in our lives, that he creates all things new, that he renews, that his mercy is new every morning, that we can hold on to that promise. And God will use the broken things in our lives. God will use those tests and make it into a testimony. God will use this mess in the mess and make it into that beautiful message to proclaim to the world. God has used in our brokenness. God has used my brokenness and it gives me compassion, empathy, and sympathy. It gives me, Lord, if you can use a person like me, God, you can, you can share this to the world, Father. You can share this to the world. In the midst of your brokenness, Yolanda, God can use your broken, God, he can use your brokenness to share to the world that God can save the God, that God can save a wretch like me. For God saved a person like Rachel and renewed her. And look at she has been faithful to get into the word. Does she have it all together? We don't all of us don't have it all together. We don't have it all together, guys. That's why I said in the very beginning, this does not give you a license to sin because his grace is sufficient. His grace, to, his grace is to give you a thing to say, Lord, I'm, I'm so broken. I need, to, I need to turn to you, Father. I want to I repent of all the sins that I've done. I don't want to turn that way anymore. I want to turn to you because you find me in my brokenness. And check this out too, guys, because in verse 10, in verse 10, because it keeps on going and, and it talks about how, how uh, uh, Laban felt like his, uh, Laban and the servants, they felt like Jacob was scheming and Jacob was, was doing it. But check this out in, in verse 10 out of, uh, out of uh, Genesis chapter 31, verse 10. One night, one time during the night, the mating season, I had a dream and saw that the male goats meeting with the females were, straight, uh, were streaked and speckled and spotted. That in my dream, the angel of God said to me, Jacob, and I replied, yes, here I am. Here I am. <laughs> and God's still giving Jacob a dream. God's still speaking to Jacob. But I love the, the, the response that Jacob did. He said, yes, here I am. Here I am. And the angel said to him, look up. You will see that only the streaked and speckled and spotted males are mating with the females of your flock. For I have seen how Laban has been treating you. I am, God sees what we go through. I am the God who appeared to you in Bethel, the, meaning the house of the Lord, the place where you, where, you, where you anointed the pillar of stone and made your vow to me. Now get ready and leave this country and return to the land of your birth. And then Rachel and Leah responded, that's fine with us. We won't inherit any of our father's wealth anyway. He has, re he has reduced our rights of those of foreign women. And, uh, and after he has sold us, he wasted the money you paid for, for us. And all the wealth God has given you from our father legally belongs to us and our children. So go ahead and do whatever God has told you. <laughs> there you go. <sighs> How many times have we experienced that in our lives? You know, it's just, I'll tell you this, guys. God uses broken things. But Jacob says, here I am, Lord. Here I am with my dysfunctional family. I love what uh, Joe Lewis, he said, he says, we put the funk in dysfunctional. <laughs> oh, that was classic. I love it. I love it. We put the funk in dysfunctional. Uh, and that's what happens, guys. Sometimes we add to it. But we say, Lord, here I am. Take me as I am. Take me with the brokenness. Take me with the, even with the broken family. Take me. God is using our brokenness to share this message. God is using our brokenness. God, God uses people. Look, look at it even in, in Matthew. If we go into Matthew, check this out. Jesus called his 12 disciples to gather and gave them authority to cast out evil spirits and to heal every kind of sickness and disease. And this is out of Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Here are the names of the 12 apostles. Here are the names of the 
crazies. <laughs> Here are the names of the, not the crazies, but you know, you know what I mean? As far as like, God uses broken people. God uses, first was Simon, also called Peter. Then Andrew, then James, son of Zebedee. John, James' brothers, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the tax collector, James, Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed him. And a lot of times we see these people, and we just read this yesterday. The Pharisees asked, told Jesus, why would he eat with such scum? He ate with Matthew and his uh, and his and his, uh, and his friends, and they asked them, "Why do you eat with such scum?" And then Jesus replied, "He said the he said the sick are the one who needs a doctor. The broken are the one who needs the healing." And I looked at these names. I was like, "God, you use you use broken people. You use their story. You use their story." to be a part of his story. You get it? You use their story to be a part of his story, history, history, but his story, God's story. God's writing out this beautiful story. God's writing out with the good, bad, and the ugly. Even too, if you look at the lineage of Christ, you, you, you see you see that the kind of people that were, there were farmers, there were, prostitute there's like Ruth there was like there's so many Rahab there's so many different people and God used them to be part of his story and God is using God is using you in a mighty way to be part of his story because we are we are on this earth guys God has called us to be on this earth for this time and a lot of times we feel like we're disqualified but Jesus said in the next uh, portion, it says, Jesus sent out the 12 apostles with them, with these instructions. Don't go to the Gentiles or Samaritans, but only to the people of Israel. God's lost sheep. Go to announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Curse those. Cure those with leprosy and cast out demons. And this one, give as freely as you have received. Give as freely as you have received. But God has given us freely mercy and grace. God has given us forgiveness. God has given us authority now. Where we felt like we didn't have that authority anymore. We felt like we were disqualified. But Jesus said, give as freely as you have received. Here you go, guys. And that's what's happening. This God is, has freely given us things in, in our hearts. And I will freely give it to you. I will freely share it. What God has placed in my heart, we will freely give. You know, with the one-year Bible. Freely give out the one-year Bibles. Freely give it. Somebody's asking for a one-year Bible. Here you go. Somebody's asking, Lord, we have received. Lord, we give. Powerful, guys. On a Friday, after, on a Friday morning. <laughs> Freely you give, freely you receive. Give as freely as you have received. And verse 9, don't take any money in your money belts. No gold, silver, even copper coins. Don't carry a traveler's bag with a change of clothes and, uh, and sandals or even walking sticks. Don't hesitate to accept hospitalities because, because those, who work, those who work deserve to be fed. Whenever you enter a city or village, search for a worthy person and stay in, their, stay in his home until you, until you leave the town. When you enter the home, give it your blessing. If it turns out to be worthy, a worthy home, let the blessing stand. If it's not, take that, uh, back the blessing. Anyone house, if any household or town refuses to welcome you or listen to you, listen to your message, shake off his dust and feed as you leave. And I tell you the truth, the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah will be better off than such a town on judgment. I was, I was reading that. I said, wow. I said, now it's like, 
now with social media, if somebody does not want to listen to the message, they can keep on scrolling. But if somebody wants to hear the message of the Lord, if somebody wants to hear the message of Christ, the message of Jesus, they'll stay and then they'll share with other people. Look at this, look at this message. But that's what's part of, of uh, social media. I completely understand that. Retaining people, retaining their, uh, their attention. I believe that the Lord has our attention. But those who don't want to, they just keep continue to scroll. They're like, ah, they're talking about Jesus again. But you'll see, because of the consistency that's happening here, they're going to say, let me hear one of these messages. Let me just hear what this person has to say. I don't know them, but I've seen this, I've seen this on, on so-and-so's page. So let me see what they're, what they're listening to. What, what's going on? What's happening? Why there's so many? Why, what's, what's happening with this? And they're hearing this message and like, wow, I'm being touched by this message. My heart is being, being touched by this message and I, I want to hear more. I want to hear more with this message. And then he's not going off for two hours, three hours, but he's sharing this message within the 30 minutes and then sharing, sharing about the word. What does the word of God say? And a lot of people are searching. A lot of people are in, this, are in the brokenness. I was hearing that the, the suicide rates have gone up. The depression rates have gone up. Divorces have gone up. It's like so many things are happening within the, the individual and into the household. And people are in fear. People are, you know, but getting this message of hope because you have, you have heard many things on the news. This is happening. This is happening. You hear all the bad news. But hearing the message of the Lord will change your life forever. And God will use his dysfunctional. Can you think like, I got to put all my ducks in a row. I got to do all these things. I have to do this. I have to do, I have to get right before I come to the Lord. No, come as you are. Here I am. Be like Jacob. Here I am. Yes, Lord, here I am. Here I am. With all my filth, with all my junk, with all the arguing, with all the depression, with all the fear, with all the failure, with all the things, with all the things that's happening in my family. Lord, here I am. Here I am. Here I am, Lord. Psalms 12, 1 through 8, as we begin to land this plane. Help, O Lord, for the godly are fast disappearing. The faithful have vanished from the earth. Could you imagine when the rapture happens? They really disappear. They're like, they're gone. All the, all the godly people have vanished. The faithful have vanished from the earth. And then it goes on, labors lie to each other, speaking flattery lips and deceitful hearts. May the Lord cut off their flattering lips and silence their boastful tongues. They said, we, they will, we will lie to our hearts content. Our lips are our own. Who can stop us? And the Lord replies, I have seen violence done to the helpless. I have heard the groans of the poor. Now I will rise up to rescue them as, they, as long as they... As long, excuse me, I'm just butchering that. Now I will rise up to rescue them as they have longed for me to do. The Lord's promises are pure, like silver refined in a furnace, purified seven times over. Therefore, Lord, we will know you will protect the oppressed, preserving them forever from this lying generation. Even the wicked strut about and evil is praised throughout the land. And we see that rapid so much. Now, before there was, there was a lot of things going on. But now since it was, it's on social media, it says they even, even the evil is praised throughout the land. We see no more. We, we see as if the fight takes off, if a, if a fight breaks out, what do people do? They start filming it. They want to film it. They want to like, oh, I want to get the first. I want to put it on social media. I want to look at what everybody's doing. And then we, we, we see it so rampant now. And we see what's going on in other countries. We see it just like, whoosh, spread like wildfire. Because with, this, with social media, it just, like, it just spreads. It's crazy, guys. And, and Proverbs 3, 13 through 15. Joyful is the person who finds wisdom. The one who gains understanding. For wisdom is more profitable than silver and her wages are better than gold. 
Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare to her. Amen. Powerful message this morning, guys. May his grace and mercy transform you and me to say, God, I don't want to live this way anymore. I want to be a different person. I love what Pastor Nick said. He said, Ev he said everything new in 2022. <laughs> so I pray that you receive this message, guys. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed Friday. We'll see you guys. Um, or I will we'll be uh, filming the, uh, the, the message on Sunday live. And so come and join us. If you don't have a home church or if you want to come and visit us here at, in the city of Southgate, uh, we are across the street from the park. So if uh, Southgate Park, so if you guys want to come, come. It's going to be a powerful time of just receiving the word of God. I'm excited to see what God's going to share with us this, uh, this Sunday. So God is amazing, guys. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. If not, then we'll see you guys back on Monday morning. God bless you. Have a blessed weekend. We'll see you guys. Si Dios quiere. God bless you. Happy TJF. God bless you guys.